Today, we're looking at cross-document view transitions, which is a fancy way of saying animating between pages on our website. Now, okay, I'm clicking on this read more and it goes to the post details section. I can scroll down and read the blog post here. I'm pressing the back button and it's animating back to the list page. Now, we used to require libraries like Barba.js for this and a lot of JavaScript, but with the view transitions API, we can do this in just a couple lines of CSS. So let's see how to build it in Webflow. Hey there, Webbay. Let's start real quick by inspecting everything on Webflow here. So we can see we have a CMS collection with a list that is a grid and then some items in here with an image, the heading, the paragraph tag, and a link here. So we've got four things in a row here, and these are just normal Webflow elements, image, heading, item, all attached to the CMS. Now I removed all of the view transitions code so that this is just what you get out of the box. When you click, it's loading the next page until it loads, then it just boom, splats on there and starts rendering. Now, the first thing we're looking at is the CSS at view transition rule, which is used to opt in the current and destination documents to undergo a view transition. So in the case of cross document navigation, a lot of times you'll see this in other examples with MPA, multi-page application. All that's saying is that it's a website and that's opposed to something like an SPA, single page application. Um, which or same document kind of transition or navigation, which is when everything happens on the same page. But that's besides the point for now. We're just going to start with this syntax, which is at view transition, setting navigation to auto. So let's go ahead and copy this. Now back in Webflow, I'm using the FinSuite Chrome extension to work on my page style. So we're going to open up custom code here. And in my header, I'm just going to open and close style tags. This is CSS we're writing and paste this in. So the view transition navigation, remember we're opting our navigation events into this view transition CSS rule. So we'll save and close this and publish. And now here on our site, if I click, we're actually getting a cross dissolve animation just out of the box. So opacity is fading and then coming in. It may be hard to see on the video, depending on how many frames it's going and how fast the animation is. But just like that, we've already opted in to cross document view transition. So really easy with like two lines of CSS. Now, the next thing I wanna do is customize the animation. So let's just skip on down. If we scroll down this a little bit more, we see that we can define keyframe animations to use here as well as we have this view transitions old and inbound view transitions new pages that we want to animate. So we see here, we're defining keyframes and we're calling this animation move out where we go from a translate Y value of 0% to a translate Y value of negative 100%. So that means moving up uh, on the page as we're looking at it. And we have move in, which is coming from 100% to 0%. And that means moving down. So we should expect our list view to go up or whichever view we're on at the time to go up and the new view to come down, depending on how these are actually done. So old, that's the old view. So move out, yep, that is up. And then we have move in is being called here to move it down. So let's go ahead, we're gonna copy all of this and back in our site code. So we'll open up the custom code here. Right under this, I'm just gonna paste all of that. So we'll go ahead and save and close that. Now let's publish. Okay, so now if I click read more, we're seeing that we get this kind of sliding animation. So our whole page has been turned into a slider basically, uh, which is pretty cool, with just a couple lines of CSS. And I'm using just the back button here to get back to the, um, the first page. So it's like recognizing browser navigation events, which is cool. Now, I think the next thing I wanna work on is getting that image to shift from the one that's clicked into the position right here. So let's explore how to do that. And we can do that with view transition name. So here's view transition name. It is a CSS property that provides the selected element with distinct identifying name. So custom ident and causes it to participate in a separate view transition from the root view transition or no view transition if none value is specified. However, we do want this to participate in its own transition where it goes from its starting spot to its final state during the page navigation. Now, something that's important is that the identifier must be unique. So we need to do a little trickery in Webflow to make sure that we can specify unique values on our CMS items. Now, keep in mind, this is a CSS property. So you would think I could just grab the image here. So I'll go ahead and add a custom property and I wanna add view transition name, just like that. And there it is there. However, what value do we give it here? If I give it a value of two, or it doesn't like two, let's just call this uh, bunny. Of course, that's gonna duplicate on every image because of how the Webflow CMS system functions. And I can't really specify a modifier like one, two, three, four, five. There's no index value for me to inject here, or I can't use the CMS slug title, which I would really like to do. Another option you would think of exploring is going to settings here and then setting a custom attribute and setting the style attribute to the view transition name equal to slug here, because here we have access to those um, CMS fields. 
However, notice it says style is a reserved name. So if I try to save this, notice it like removes the E from style here. So if I view, zoom in there, then we cannot see it. So that's not gonna work. And we need to get a little bit more custom with how we're dealing with this. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna come in here and inside the item, I will go ahead and drop an embed. So a code embed. And I want to make an image that has a source equal to, now we can use this add field up here, our main image. And we'd wanna set alt text, of course. Let's just set this to bunny. And we will also want to specify that view transition name now, which we can just set the style attribute to view transition name colon space, and then put our slug in here. So just like that. And then this is a self-closing tag. And we probably don't even need this space right here. So we've just gone ahead and written the CSS ourselves here. And this doesn't have a class applied to it. So we can just leave that and save and close. And now we see this image pop up down here. And I need to delete this first image and we'll go ahead and drag this code embed up here so that it's back at the top. And now we need to link it to the same name on the other page. Remember, we're using the slug. So let's do that now. So let's see if I can just copy this code embed right here, come back to the blog post template and drop it in. I'm gonna delete that image, bring the code embed up here. And now this actually had a custom style applied to it. So let's call this class equal to, I think it was called details underscore image, just like that. And yes, now this is taking up the correct amount of space. And notice that it has that view transition name on it that is talking to the CMS slug and we're setting the source attribute to the main image. So let's save, we'll go back to our homepage and we will go ahead and publish. Okay, now when I click read more, we'll see that image animate to the new location and our other page transition is happening at the exact same time. And it's starting to kind of look a little bit messy now, but we were able to achieve exactly what we wanted with that image going to the place it needed to go. Now, I think it would be cool to also do that with the heading and the paragraph tag here. I'm not gonna show it or I'm gonna speed the video up, but essentially what I need to do for those is exactly what I did with the image. I need to put them in their own embed so that I can talk to the CMS slug field and inject that right there. So I'm gonna do that now. All right, so I went ahead and made those changes. You'll see I have code embed here, code embed here, code embed here. The reason I didn't put them all into the same code embed is that I'm actually using subgrid in this layout. So if I look at item and subgrid, you see it's spanning four items. So I just wanna make sure there was a DOM element for each one so that I have three code embeds and then that link down here. Anyways, the other thing that I had to do is that we see, okay, I'm making this an H2. I'm grabbing the class that it used to have and I am setting the view transition name to the slug dash name here. Remember, it has to be unique. So we have to have dash name there. We have to have dash image here and we have to have dash summary or whatever you want here. And then we need to connect it up on the details page. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now on the post details page, this is linked up. We need to make this the slug dash image and then the H2 or the H1 in this case. So let's make it an H1 is slug dash name. And the paragraph tag here is slug dash summary. So we can save those. And the other thing I think that I want to do is I wanna simplify the actual document transition. So let's go into code here. And rather than do all this stuff, let's just shift the opacity. So this is opacity. And for move out, we're gonna go from one to an opacity of zero. And for move in, we're gonna go from opacity of zero. So copy this, paste to opacity of one, just like so. And we could of course change the, oops, to opacity of one. Where did my opacity one go? All right, opacity one. And you can make the, you know, change the easings here. Let's make the old one going out, get out faster by calling ease out here. And I like this at ease in. So we'll save that, close. And now let's see our final result. All right, so let's click read more and we'll see everything transitions now, the heading and the paragraph tag. And I get this really cool effect. And the opacity is also transitioning such that the borderline kind of shows up in a nice way. Unfortunately, view transitions is not yet available in Safari. However, it's a progressive enhancement so that when I actually just go and navigate, it just falls back to normal behavior here. So nothing really to worry about, but if you do really want this to work in Safari, then you should check out my whole mini series on Barba.js available in Patreon. Right here, it is how many videos? Nine videos where I walk through everything to get Barba.js working right in Webflow. And we end on a very similar kind of capstone animation where we have a transition with GSAT flip and we have these bars moving and animating all around. So that would be really cool. Check that out in Patreon. And if you just wanna know about GSAT flip, I'm gonna put a video in YouTube about that here 
where I was challenged by the guys at Reloom to make their cool hero animation. So check that out.